Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create a chart that also has a vertical line that helps you separate uh, pre-date and post-date activity. So for example, let's say we have a, a chart here that this is a basically a simple line chart that may be tracking quantity or price, maybe stock price. And you want to check the activity of the stock after a significant date. Let's say there was an announcement of some significant nature, there was a merger, or maybe there was a a divestiture and you want to track the activity and you want to have a visual representation of that particular date. One way you can do it is after this chart was created what we can do is we can insert a line. So I can go to insert and under here I can insert a line and to draw a straight line you have to press the shift key and then go ahead and just draw a straight line. It doesn't waver. See if I move my mouse around it doesn't waver. It keeps it straight so you just press the shift key and then kind of draw it out and I can just kind of give it a color and maybe not give it a size maybe give it a little heavier weight and what I can do is I can put it maybe in this instance maybe the activity occurred on March 1st so let me go ahead and kind of highlight one of the uh, the uh, or kind of hover over one of the points to try to figure out exactly uh, where my date is and maybe my date is going to be on uh, March the 3rd 3-3 and it, it was at 67 so maybe I can put it there and that was the date of activity let me go ahead and press my shift key to kind of bring this down a little bit and bring this down a little bit here. And you can do lots of not, uh, other things to it, uh, but maybe that, that's going to be my activity there. Now, the thing about creating just a line chart, just a line and putting it onto a line chart is, uh, say we're tracking this again and we're putting some more information here. Let's say I go down to the bottom. Let me go ahead and put some more information here. I'm going to go ahead and select these two cells and kind of extend it out a bit maybe all the way up to the uh, mid-May time period. And I'm going to go ahead and put some figures in here. Let me go ahead and select down here. And I'm just going to put a random number between, oops, let me go ahead and select it again and go all the way to the bottom here. And let me go ahead and select a random number between um, 10 and 80, right? I'm going to put equal random uh, between, and this will select a random number between 10 and 80. I'll go ahead and close the parentheses, press control enter to enter this formula within all the cells. You can see here now it's created that. Now I, all I need to do is just kind of draw uh, the new cell boundaries for this chart. So I selected the chart. You can see that there's boundaries for this range. I'm going to go ahead and sc scroll down and go ahead and increase the boundary for uh, the cell area for the chart, you know, the plot area and also the for the chart. So let me go ahead and select one of these and kind of bring it down to the bottom here. Whoops, that's a little bit too far. Bring it down to the bottom here. And let me go back up to the chart and you'll see what happened. Right? So my date was on March 3rd, right? And so you can see that my charts changed. March 3rd is over here now but the line has stayed over here. So if this is something that we expect to occur often where we update the data for the series, we would have to always move our little vertical marker back to the date of um, importance, right? Well, there's a way that we can do that where it moves with it as we update the chart, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go into this other tab here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create uh, basically two ranges of data, one series of data that tracks the um, activity over time and the other one for just that merger date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my range of data. I'm just going to select anywhere in here. Excel is pretty smart enough to figure out how to plot it. So I'm going to go under insert and I'm going to insert not a line chart, but I'm going to insert a scatter chart and a scatter chart that has uh, smooth lines and markers. So I'm going to go and select that. Let me go ahead and expand this out a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and bring that out a little bit here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these uh, grid lines. Select the grid lines, press delete, and also select these grid lines and press, whoops, not the, not the plot area. Let me go ahead and select this grid line and press delete. All right, and all I need to do now is I'm going to put in a couple of values here. So I think I had a merger date of 3, 3, so I'm going to go press 3, dash 3, press enter or tab, and it gives me that date. I'm going to put two cells that have that 3, 3 date, 3, 3, uh, press tab. And the first, uh, item here is I'm going to put zero and the second one is I'm going to put the maximum number here so basically what I want to do is I want to plot a line that goes from zero all the way up to the maximum uh, amount that uh, this range of data gives me so I'm going to use the max uh, function max and then I'm going to use the max of this range of data because it's going to increase so I'm going to go ahead and just choose max of column B to column B right press close parentheses, press enter, and the max is 67. So somewhere in here, the max amount is 67. It looks like this uh, 
this date 2-4, which kind of gives me this date right here, right? 2-4, yep. So what I need to do now is I'm going to go ahead and bring this data in. I'm going to go ahead and select that data, control C here, and basically just control V to paste. So what I have now is I have a vertical marker that adjusts and moves as this line adjusts, this, this chart trend adjusts. So let me go ahead and show you how that works. So let me go all the way to the bottom here. Maybe I'm going to add some more dates. Let me go and select this. Let me go ahead and add more dates here. Right, and I, it goes up to 519. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a random number generator here. Random between 10 and 80. Uh, close parentheses. Press Control Enter to stay in that cell. I'm going to go ahead and just double click this particular fill handle and it'll copy the formula down. Go ahead and double click that. It'll copy the formula down. Let me go back up to my chart. Let me select my chart. Let me see if it picked up the. Uh, let me see. I may need to select the plot area or the chart area. Let me see. Maybe just the, the chart itself. Yes, I selected the lines itself. Now you can see that it's selected here in the range here. I'm going to go ahead and bring that range down now. And go ahead. Oops. Well, I'll bring that one down first, and then bring the other one down. Bring the dates down, and then go ahead and bring the values down. Right? Bring them down. So now it will reflect in the chart itself, and then go back up. So it reflected in the chart itself, and you notice now that we have the March 3rd. It moved with it. So basically, what the chart, what this marker did, as the chart increased with the values, the, the trend, it moved with it. And so I didn't have to adjust that. So maybe I can just do some formatting here. Now I can select this line, right click, and maybe format the data point. Maybe I don't need to have uh, some things there. So I can go ahead and select the uh, paint here. Maybe I don't want to have uh, the line or the marker. I don't, maybe I don't want this marker here. Maybe I just want to have a um, a line or not have it automatic have no marker so it doesn't have that little circle there uh, same here uh, make it none so it doesn't have the marker so it just makes a nice little nice point maybe I also want to have a little call out here maybe I can click on my line here right click and maybe I'll add a little data label or a little call out so I'll add the data label here and it, you notice it says 80 right now and I have a title here for merger date so maybe I can go ahead and select this particular label and let me go under my label options. Let me see. I think it's over here. Yes. And then I can just give it the series name. Um, oh, it didn't. Uh, it's picking up series two name because I didn't include uh, the, the title up here. Maybe I can take the value from the cell. Let me go ahead and select that and see if I can bring the value from the cell. Click OK. You can see it do it's done it down here. I can just go ahead and t click this one and remove it and just move this one up. Maybe I'm going to move this one up here. All right. And let's say, for example, I add some more dates. Let me go ahead and add some more dates here. And you'll see that it's moved. So let me go add some of the dates here. Let me go all the way down here, maybe add it until the bottom. And there's, there's my ran between function still works here. I'm going to go ahead and double click the fill handle. So now I need to go ahead and extend out uh, the series. Click on, click on any of the uh, lines here. Let me scroll down here and maybe extend this out a little bit. Let me go and see if I can select both. Yep. Oh no, let me go ahead and select that one and then I'll select this one and go back up to the top. Control home. I'll just press control home to go back all the way up top. You can see now that the last point here is 58. And you can also see that it has moved. In addition, this is this 53 here. Let me hover over it. You see 53 and then it's moved. The, the vertical line has moved and also the call out has moved with it. So there's a way that you can create a, a marker that kind of separates your pre and post activity date. And this is kind of helpful if you've got a line chart and you want to have some kind of marker or some kind of line or delineator to separate uh, pre and post activity on something. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.